Well, hi folks, and welcome to Art Tips with John, a show that helps you build up your artistic talent and also learn how to build your business as well. Welcome to the show. Okay, folks, well, in today's show, we're going to be talking about a really popular question that I get asked all the time by students from all over the world. And it's, John, how do I know which artwork or art form or medium is right for me? And my answer is often the same. It's you've got to try it to kind of see. But in this video, I want to teach you and talk to you a little bit about the different things that you can learn throughout different mediums, which may help you make an educated decision when you are choosing your medium of choice. Okay, okay folks, now if you're an art teacher such as ourselves, you will have probably a binder that looks just like this. Um, so I'm able to basically list things out to you as I would normally teach them and every single one of these things that we're going to be talking about today I have personally taught to our students both online and in the practical courses as well. So the first thing we're going to look at is charcoal and if you are looking for something where you can blend and it's got a really nice feel to it and it's kind of an extension from your body then charcoal is a really good thing to use however it can be messy okay I personally don't overly use charcoal because I don't like the texture on my skin um, but that's just a personal preference um, if you're looking for something to develop in pressure also in shape and in form and light and shadow and work in different areas then charcoal is a good place to begin the things to remember when you are purchasing your charcoal sticks are okay and I've got a few notes on here so I'll just be referring to them um, there are two different types of charcoal that artists will mainly use when doing artwork the first one is vine charcoal which is a really really thin piece of charcoal very easy to break okay it's really delicate um, and it's very fine as I say the second one is a compressed charcoal which is much denser it tends to come more in a, in a rectangle kind of shape um, it's much denser much harder and much darker with less pressure okay um, what I would also recommend uh, also investing in is uh, a sealant spray so when you have finished your work you can just spray it and then it's done and dusted it isn't going to smudge it isn't going to get on anything else and your artwork is good and ready for framing if you want to frame it the other thing that you might want to invest in would be a putty rubber now putty rubber is completely different from an ordinary rubber whereas with an ordinary rubber we would go do, 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 do. with a putty rubber you actually dab and push it into the paper and it pulls off the charcoal um, I personally prefer a normal rubber make sure you get a good quality one HP tend to be really really good Good, uh, and um, it won't tend to smudge too much if you get a, if you get a low quality rubber that's basically plastic it is going to smudge and it won't have the desired effect that you are looking for um, something obviously that creates good radiant it's much easier to blend as opposed to graphite which we'll get onto in a second um, and you know you've lots of different ways that you can try and draw you can use a side you can use this you can use that you can use a point as well so I hope this helps you make an informed decision as to whether or not to use charcoal the next one we're going to look at is graphite and graphite is a great thing many people will get onto for sketching and you know when we were doing some castle sketches and other bits and pieces that I was working on over the last year or so I really like doing graphite what I would recommend is definitely definitely go for graphite pencils over ordinary bog standard pencils they are a little bit more expensive and I'm talking maybe a pound or two more expensive for a tin of maybe 12 um, if you get them from the works if you get them from B&M or in the, if you're in the United States get them from Walmart um, or you can order them all online as well. You don't need to pay a whole lot for them um, But you'll definitely notice the difference between an ordinary bog standard cheapy pencil for maybe 20p and You know a graphite pencil that is designed to draw um, The other thing to say about graphite is it comes in usually a few different uh, densities and thicknesses uh, one thing that you're going to need to notice is a B pencil if I remember correctly is a lot softer but again, you don't need to press as hard to get your work much darker. With a finer graphite pencil, you need to press much harder to, to get an effect and it doesn't smudge as well. So those are just two things to think about when you're using graphite. The third thing that I want to talk about is oil pastel. Now, oil pastel is one of my personal favorites. Uh, if you're looking for something really bright, really colorful and fairly simple to use, 
oil pastel is definitely something I would encourage you to look at. And just like they did on Blue Peter, here's one I did earlier. Okay, and this was during our mixed media course. Um, some students liked uh, oil pastel, others didn't. Oil pastel can be a little bit more tricky to use uh, just because it's it doesn't have a fine point on the end. It is quite thick in terms of if you're trying to work finite detail and things, but there's always ways to work around that. It's good if you use small amounts of that as well. If you're wanting to learn certain techniques, um, so for example, pressure techniques, we've got them all here. Uh, we tend to work from white to red and then gray and orange and then blue and black. They make beautiful colors. And then we work the three together and get students to learn how to blend with them. Um, you've got different kinds of techniques that you'll use as well. You've got a heavy pressure blend, which is just as it says. So you've got a heavy pressure blend, a light pressure blend, we're going to think of stippling. Now stippling, all that is, is basically where you make those tiny little dots here and there and there and here, and it just creates a really, really nice pattern. You may also know it as almost like pixelated or, um, you know, artwork that's made up of tiny dots. Um, we've also got scrumbling, which isn't personally my favorite because I just think it's messy. Um, Scraffito. Scraffito is a beautiful way, if you lay a base color, okay, and make it bright, so a yellow or a bright blue, bright, bright green, something like that, and then you put another color on top, you can take um, maybe a, a pen or a knife or a, or a palette knife, and you can actually scratch in designs um, and here's one that I did earlier. Uh, you can scratch in designs to actually be able to put them onto your page. And the final one is obviously blending. If you're looking for something really good to blend, oil pastel is definitely the one that I would recommend to you, uh, just because it, it's nice, it's simple, it doesn't make too much of a mess, and you can create some beautiful artwork for that. Again, I would recommend using a sealant spray afterwards just to make sure it doesn't get on anything and then it's all ready for framing. And now we get to the final one, which of course is going to be painting. If you're looking for something that is an attachment, an adaption from your body and spirit, onto a canvas and onto something really, really special to create fantasy designs, to create all sorts of weird and wonderful elements into your artwork. Painting is definitely the one for you. Now, I know a lot of people get turned off by the thought of painting because maybe they've never done it before. They don't want to make a mess. They don't want to muck it up. Paint seems really, really kind of final. I promise you it's not. I've got three golden rules. One of them I've forgotten. The other one that I have with students is if you make a mistake, just leave it to dry, paint over it. And the third one I've got is, if I ain't panicking as the teacher, you don't need to panic. When I panic, then you can panic. Um, because it usually means that it's like, oh boy, this is a big mistake. Folks, I promise you, painting is something that I would really encourage you to explore. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to paint, we do have online tuition. We've got practical classes as well around Troon and South Asia. We've also got DVDs that are available at johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com and all sorts of things you can learn there from the introduction to painting, the wolves, uh, what else? we've got horses, we've got sea skips. This one behind me is available as a DVD tutorial, as a double disc. Uh, DVD tutorial because we're going to such depth uh, with you in that one. We've also got many other things that are there um, as well. The forest, polar bears paradise and all manner of other things at johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com. Um, as I covered with you last week, you know, definitely look at uh, the different kind of canvases that are out there. It doesn't need to be too expensive. You can get them online. And I would encourage you when you're starting out to just get some cheapy canvases. They, fair, they do fairly much the same job um, and, uh, and, they, and they work really, really well when you are starting out. So guys, I hope this has really helped you in terms of getting a, a, an idea as to what, you know, kind of creative skill might be right for you. Um, and I hope it's, you know, I hope it's developed a little bit more of curiosity to you. If you've got any questions for me, please do feel free to drop them in the box below or at johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com. And as always, I'll be here to help. Until next Tuesday, take care. God bless. Have an awesome day. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for all your support. As always, I've been your host, John Morris, and have an awesome week. Catch you soon.